now interracial marriage is whoredom. It's whoredom. Read what you got. Now, don't keep in mind, sister, this isn't a hate campaign. We're following God's orders. This is, lo this is love according to the Bible. Read what you got. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Sister, you hear what it said? God said, chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Now, I want you to hold this, okay? Go to Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. So I want to explain to you, sister, about the seed of thy fathers. Why this is important? Why the Bible, why God expounded on the seed of thy father, all right? Because the Bible's going to explain you how the seed, based, the nationality in the bloodline is based off of your seed. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Do what you got. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So all the children of Israel were gathered together. Watch this. And they declared their pedigrees. Sister, you familiar with the word pedigree? The word pedigree is basing off a bloodline. That's what pedigree means, all right? Read. After their families, mm -hmm. by the house of their fathers. So the pedigree of the bloodline of the family was based off the fathers. So you understand that the man carries the seed. The living specimen is in the man before it's implanted into his wife, the woman. She's just a nurturer, all right? The man carries the life, then that planted into the sister, and then she, birth, she gives nutrients to that life. So God tells us to jump back. So as you know, the seed comes from the man. So let's read Tobit chapter 4, uh, chapter 4 verse 12 again. The book of Tobit chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Beware of all whoredom, my son, mm -hmm. and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. So take a wife of your nationality. So if her father is a so-called Chinese man or so-called Arab man or so-called white man, God says, even though she may be light-skinned like you, she may have some curly hair. She may be a little darker than me. God says, if her father, if she's from the seed of her father and he's of another nation, God says, we cannot be in marriage with them. It does, it, the skin tone and the hair texture is not, not what it's going to. It's going to the seed of that father. Have you seen some pictures of some brothers and sisters where they look like us, but their fathers of another nation? You seen things like that? What they used to call them all? What, mulattoes, if I believe? A lot of that was happening in slavery. It was confusion. God, sir, like Bob Marley. Bob Marley's father is a so-called white man. Like Bob Marley, yes ma'am. He looks like us, he has woolly hair, he has skin like us, but he's not of our people. So God, God says that's confusion. And the father is not the author of confusion. The devil is. So anytime you go contrary to God's laws, Satan is your father. All right, read what you got, Can And take not a strange woman to wife. You hear what God said? This child, man or woman, do not take a strange woman, a strange man, to be your wife or be your husband. Read. Which is not of thy father's tribe, mm -hmm. for we are the children of the prophets. God said, because we are the children of the prophets. So the interracial marriage and the mingling is, is confusion. And God calls it an abomination. We're not to do that. We're not to cross bloodlines. When you do that, now you're causing impurity, and now you're causing yourself to weaken your bloodline. Now, ultimately, what happens? You go off into other doctrines. You start, uh, where is that? No, I I'm not gonna get that right now. So you start going to other doctrines. We start learning new things, a new language, outside of what God taught us to do, all right? The Bible says, do not be deceived, but you'll be deceived by the evil communication. You think you're talking to a girl, man or girl. Y'all use the bathroom the same way. And you see, it, back to how you walking with your pants now, give me Sirach 19. Sirach 19, uh, verse 29. I mean, it probably won't be intentional, but when your pants put, you got put on the belt. When your hind part showing, can I see your arm hurt, so you now you gotta have your shirt up, so now you really gotta pull your pants up. There's certain individuals out here that's gonna think something else. This is what you gonna think. Watch this, read what you got. Sirach, chapter 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. A man may be known by his look. A man may be known by his looks. What else? And one that has understanding by his countenance. And one that has understanding by his countenance. So you not think like this, you like, man, I'm straight, I like girls. But there's somebody else out here that's walking behind in the grocery store thinking that thing's sweet. Read what you got. When thou meetest him, a man's attire and excessive laughter and gait. His what? His a, his a what? A man's attire. His attire meaning the way he dressed. And what else? An excessive laughter uh -huh. and gait show what he is. His excessive laughter, the way he dressed, his gait shows him what he is. Most femboyant, most infeminine, 
flamboyant, man, what are they always doing? They always kick in. You can tell they funny the way they dress. They act like they're, they talk like they're, they always laughing, they loud. The way they walk, they switching their hips. What you got off the gate? Yeah, we got the definition of the gate, friend. I told you we're going to get the definition for you. What you got off This is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary for the word gate. A manner of walking or moving on foot. So the way you walk, the way you move on foot, your mannerism, the way you walk. So y'all young brothers straight, right? Y'all like girls? Okay. A, a boy that like, a, that like another boy, how do you usually walk and act? Don't, don't demonstrate. Please don't demonstrate. But how, how do they... Oh, please, I'm glad you won't. Well, how, how do they walk and act? Like they switch their hips. They switch their hips? Walk with their hands, like their arms out and stuff like, you know, Don't do it. You ain't got to do it. Like, it was a spirit of that thing. Don't do it. Sister, you, have, when you were coming up, sister, have you seen that a lot in your day? The way you see it now, men dressing like women? It's worse than that. It's way worse now, right? It's way worse now. Even the dress code has changed. The way we dress now, God said it's an abomination. Deuteronomy 25. The way we dress now, God says it's an abomination. We want to jump back to our nationality. Matter of fact, let's jump, let's jump back to our nationality. Let's get back into that. Because I want y'all to know who y'all are. Before y'all do anything and learn any more laws, it's important to know who you are. You got to know who y'all because you're not a B. Young, young princess, I want you to hear this. You're not a B. You're not an H. You understand? Don't let nobody disrespect you or call you that. You're not a soul. We got to carry ourselves in that manner. You're not a nigga. You got to carry yourselves in that manner. So God calls you an Israelite according to the Bible. All right? What you got? So this is how we identify ourselves in the Bible. We're going to go over these curses. I want to ask y'all, do you bear witness to some of these curses? We're going to bring it up to date to some of the things that's happening to our people today. Do what you got? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So God said these curses will overtake us. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. What do you think that means to be cursed in the city? Sisters, what y'all think that means to be cursed in the city? I'm asking everybody. What do you think it means to be cursed in the city? Because God said we don't listen to his commandments. He's going to curse us. Who knows what happened over here the other night? Somebody got shot. Somebody got shot. You young man heard about that? That's, a, that's one of the curses in the city. And nobody knows who does it. Nobody knows who did it, do they? Somebody know. Somebody know. But they're not telling. I'm going to show you part of the curse. Hold that. Go to Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. Hold that and we're going to jump back. It happened over here. At the store. It happened at the store. And these are the curses that's amongst our people. What happens to our people in our cities, in our communities, it doesn't happen to everybody else. You can't go to a neighborhood with a lot of so-called Chinese people, all of so-called Arabian people in their neighborhood, and they ran there gang banging, shooting each other up, selling drugs on the street. That doesn't happen in their communities. A predominantly white community, that's not happening in their communities. That's happening in our communities, with our people. God said, curse should up in the city. Watch this. Leviticus chapter five, verse one. Huh? And if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing. So if somebody sin, that sin there is going into somebody breaking God's laws, and ultimately, ultimately somebody breaks God's laws, and that also means if somebody is breaking the laws of the land. Because God said we're subjected to serve both his laws and the laws of the land. So if somebody sinned, somebody out here doing killing, because the Bible says, thou shalt not murder. Somebody got shot the other day. That's hatred in your heart. You got hatred in your heart. You were murdered. So God says, what again? And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing, huh? and is a witness, whether he has seen or known of it. So if somebody seen the crime happen, or even heard of it, yeah, did you know John John shot Boo Boo the other day? You even got names, you've heard of it, or you may have seen it. God said what you're supposed to do. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So God said, if you don't say anything, you're going to bear that iniquity. What, what does that mean? What are they always saying around the way? What are they always saying in the block? Don't do what? Stop what? They say, don't say it again. Snitch. Don't snitch. Ain't that what they say? Do y'all live? Do y'all believe in that code? Do y'all believe by that code of the street? Certain, I get like certain situations. Like I don't know. I don't so, know. do you know what snitching is? Where that, where that even derived from? That wasn't even amongst our people. 
That came from old mobsters, old Italian mobsters. They all was part of organized crime, and they all indulged in this crime together. So if one got knocked, meaning got a, found and arrested, and got thrown in jail, and he told on the other ones, he was considered a snitch because they all engaged in the crime. Look at this sister right here, she's our elder. Why wouldn't you want to respect this sister? Now if you see this sister, God forbid, sis, let me use an example. If you see her walk to the store, and somebody knock her across the head, and take her money, Say that was your grandma or your auntie. When you want somebody to say something, would you say, would y'all, what about y'all? He's speaking up, what about y'all? Would y'all say something so y'all see something happen to her? And what if everybody knew and they said, man, you snitched, what would you say? Huh? But what if it wasn't your grandmother? What was somebody, anybody else in the community? It ain't right. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think nobody that, that got a good heart and got a good mind, even if they was with the street stuff, if somebody were to do something like that to her, I don't think, if, if you were told, I don't think they would, like, have a problem with that. Like, Guess what? Everybody that lives in the streets by the street code doesn't have like, a good heart. They think they do. What, what it means to be good is to follow God's laws. That's what's good. The laws of God. If that, something like that happened, they said, man, why you say something? You know what your response supposed to be? God said I'm supposed to say something. That's right. Leviticus 5 and 1, God said, if I see something and hear about it, I'm supposed to say something. That's why our communities are so messed up in a disarray. And our young folks are running wild. I'm not speaking on y'all, but some, a lot of your pills are running wild, killing folk, doing much evil, because they're living by that one rule, don't snitch, don't say anything. Though a sister or a brother may be innocent coming from the store, trying to provide work or money or food for their family, and some Negro want to act simple and knock them upside the head or shoot them or kill them. God said don't do that. These are the laws we got to come back to. Guys, because y'all are Israelites going to the Bible. What, what's your nationality? She know her nationality. I got to ask you, what's your nationality? If I ask you what you are, what's your race? Okay, what would you call yourself? I talk to black people and they say, I asked one brother what's his nationality. He say, I'm African American. Another brother say, I'm black. Another brother say, I'm Baptist. Baptist not even a nationality. But our people have confusion. So I want y'all to look at the sign. Look at the sign right here. See that sign right there? If you can't see it, look on the back of your flight. At the very bottom on the back of your flight, on the, on the back. Those 12, those 12 tribes make up the nation of Israel. So we gotta show you what the word Egypt means. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 and verse two. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's the possessor. I am the Lord your God, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. The word Egypt means house of bondage meaning slavery. That's what Egypt means, house of bondage. The Israelites were under bondage under the Pharaoh in Egypt. They were in slavery for 430 years under the Pharaoh's rule. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna I'm get that for you. I'm gonna explain that to you. We're gonna jump back to 15, but we continue reading that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So God is going to deliver us into slavery again on cargo slave ships. We're going to explain. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. God said you will be sold unto your enemies. Remember, God said he was going to send us into slavery. Right. God did this. And we're going to explain, we're going to explain that to you. And we're going to be sold into our enemies for what? For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Children are excluded. They were slaves too. Read. And no man shall buy you. Buy you is an old Quaker term meaning me. Nobody will be able to save you. Nobody will be able to redeem you. So go to Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 15. This is why we went into slavery. Right here we're about to show it to you. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the Bible says, if you don't listen to God, this is what's going to happen to you, to us. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe and to do all his commandments. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God said, if we don't keep his laws as his commandments, that all these curses will come upon us and overtake us. So that's why we went into slavery, because we didn't listen to God. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, 
God is punishing you because what you didn't do. Right. Don't blame nobody else but yourself. God is punishing us. Why? Because we want to kill each other. We want to sell drugs to each other. We want to we want to fornicate. We want to commit adultery. We want to spread hatred. So God is punishing us for doing that. So this is who the rules and the laws were given to. You have children? And y'all got parents, right? Your parents give you rules for their household. You gave your children rules for their household. I have children, he has children, he has children. We give our children rules for the household. And if you break those rules, what happens? There's a punishment. If your children break those rules, there's a punishment. I don't care if the other kids are down the street breaking out windows and doing stuff. I gave you rules for my house. Therefore, God gave his children rules. And guess what? They broke his rules. Read. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So his, his statutes and his judgments were shown unto these people, the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God gave you laws to abide by, and then we didn't want to do it. Read. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And as for his judgments, nobody else has known them. So when they can go around killing people and they say, oh, he had a bad day. He had a bad, he went into the church and killed nine black people because he had a bad day. When you still a candy bar because you're hungry, you get four years in jail. They haven't known God's judgments. We have known God's judgments. Because God, God said what? Thou should not steal. So you broke, though they killed somebody, you broke God's law. Nation is men leading by example.